this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. Do it! Do it! Don't be a coward! Uh, Fuck it up! The outlaws are up to their neck in clockwork handlers. Uh, but yeah, you're robbing this bank. You broke into the backside. Uh, you stealthily dealt with one of the clockwork handlers. In beautiful rogue fashion. Not so stealthily dealt with the next one and kind of got ambushed by two more. And just as you finished those off, uh, another one let out its signal and brought in two more from the outside. And the job is getting hotter by the minute. He is going to reach onto his back and pull out his flintlock musket and... And because it's a gun and, you know, it'd make no sense for it to not already be loaded, he is going to point it at the robot and he is going to shoot. And all of you are not deafened, but you shoot a gun in like a enclosed uh, stone temple. Fine. We're just fine. And that little echo. I think uh, stealth is fair to say has uh, left the building. Their alarms are probably louder than my gun. Can they finish off the muscle before the law shows up? I can't be healed, and I am actively taking shots for you. Hey, listen, just gotta focus to yourself and remember, Diant. Get ready to find out. That's, it's, that's, that's, that's Tui, baby! Baby! Christ. (laughs) Now. I wanted to start out today, uh, wanted to make a comment to anyone listening, uh, thinking about our decision choice for picking games for the different seasons we play. Uh, I wanted to, to peel back, as we like to do a lot here, uh, peel back the veneer and uh, let our it be skin. known. No, no, peeling back our skin. Well, the Damn flesh it. is weak. The, the flesh, flesh is, is weak. weak, but I like it. Uh, we actually weren't planning to play <laughs> Pathfinder for uh, this season. I'm not sure if we said this in episode one or not, uh, but we super duper were not planning to play this game. Mm -mm. Uh, And for transparency's sake, like we start picking the next game probably two months into a season. So, or uh, sometimes less than that. Um, And I I think we settled on second edition about a month, month and a half before we finished recording. Yeah, we settled. So this season, how that compares to releasing. And And I I think it had a lot to do with the fact that we could get yeehaw second edition. Well, but basically what happened is I won't tell the audience what we had planned, but we had planned for another game. I, I had already picked up a book for it. Um, and you were already looking at stuff for it, I think. And then what happened was, is we played with Micah. We played our infamous Cowboy Witcher session with Micah. Uh, we recorded that, I think, at the beginning of February. Um, and I sprung Cowboy on top of Micah, like, because he wasn't anticipating it to go that route. And I kind of, uh, uh, surprised him with it. Um, and we had so much fun with it. And I think like less than a week later, Paizo released the cover art for Outlaws of Alkenstar. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I remember sending it to Jacob and being like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not fully committed to this other game yet. We were just starting to research it, but like we might have to play this. This was going to come out right whenever we're finishing up Witcher. And uh, it basically, what it didn't it turn into like two weeks of me saying, I'm not going to commit to doing it. And then like later on, after they dropped the players got, I was like, all right. It yeah. was, uh, you You started seriously considering it because we had a lot of fun with the Western themes, just like the music's, you know, slapping and it's fun to yeah. do the accent and just yeehaw, you know? Yeah. But you didn't want to, because you've always had the unspoken rule. Right. That whenever we do something for the podcast, it was supposed to be something a little bit more obscure. People hadn't maybe heard of it so much. Yeah, the, the, that was your main like driving force away from second edition. Yeah. yeah, the unspoken rule. I think I've mentioned this in some YouTube comments. Is that one of the key things I like to pick whenever, or decision making factors whenever we're picking a new game? Is not only something that like we're interested in, but like if I can't find a podcast that I like of it, like for example, there's a lot of things that are streamed and they take the audio and turn that into a podcast. And in my humble opinion, 
that doesn't really count as a podcast. No. I mean, you can deliver it as a podcast, but that's meant to be consumed either live or visually yeah, or visually. Some, some combination of the two. A podcast is fundamentally different. You're making it with the assumption that people aren't going to be able to see stuff. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. you you kind of structure it more like a, like an audio book or a talk show or whatever have you, right? Geralt cursed nastily. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, like, if there's not a really good, like, podcast first actual play of a game, then that makes it a strong contender for me because I want to be able to let us cause come in and do it and give people who are looking to play that game something to kind of learn off of, right? Yeah. Um, and that is not the case for second edition. No, second edition's a bit more well known. You see a, a lot more stuff for it than you do for games like Forbidden Lands or The Witcher. Yeah, but, and a lot of people um, we like, like yeah. shows we like, make shows for Pathfinder. Yeah, it um, was something we wanted to do. I mean, it's it's been on the list since day one. Like they're basically the top three since day one is games on my shelf that I've wanted to play for multiple years has been. Forbidden Lands, yep. Witcher, yep. Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, and I think what really did it was, I don't know if we would have ever done just 2nd Edition on its own. I think I said from the beginning that we would have to have a strong adventure path. Yeah. And it was the combination of playing with Micah and then that adventure path lining up basically perfectly for us to hop over um, and and jump into it. And then like the the other big thing that sold me on it is like, we were debating it all through March and then we got the player's guide around mid-March and started really digging into it. To give you a, con- a an idea of how long we've been working on this, we're recording this in the beginning of June, like second yeah. week of June, and we started reading rule books in March. Um, we started playing at the end of April when we finished season two and we played for about a month before we did this. Yeah, both other games we've played were a lot simpler. Yeah. And we knew coming into Pathfinder 2nd Edition that because it's so much chunker, we were going to have to take more time to work with it. Yeah, but the timing really felt perfect because I think it was the week, the same week we we did our last recording for Season 2 is the week the first book actually got like delivered to my house. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I think also right whenever I was really starting to prepare to do DMing stuff, I was debating, like, are we going to, we have to use a virtual tabletop. Are we going to do Roll20? Do we want to bother learning Foundry? And then they announced the Foundry module, like, very soon, very afterwards. quickly after that this question came up. So it just, the, the, the timing of it is perfect. So that's kind of like the history behind why we picked it. Um, and then I wanted to piggyback off of that because uh, we've talked about how we played a lot of first edition Pathfinder, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of people who may be coming into this season haven't listened to our older stuff, don't know like where we come from. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, our group started out as a D and D three point five group in 2015, I think. And fifth edition was out then, but like we played three point five because you had the books and knew it. Yeah. I I when I was in middle school, uh, I played with my brother like two or three times, and that was my almost my entire experience with tabletop RPGs, but I loved it. So when we had a chance to start playing, I got out the 3.5 books that we had. Uh, We went through the beginner box set. But soon after, you know, starting 3.5, I learned about Pathfinder somehow, probably just looking up stuff online. And uh, Pathfinder was just... The 3.5 plus, but a bit more smoothed that with a lot of the rules. And I noticed that a lot of the classes that we'd already chosen to play had like little bonuses in Pathfinder. I was like, you know, this will be fun because like the sorcerer had more, the rogue had more, paladin. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> we were very excited to uh, switch into Pathfinder because I could have been a dragon. Uh, yes. Sorcerer. Yes. And, which uh, was not an option in 3.5. So we played 3.5 for a little bit, but it wasn't very long until we swapped to Pathfinder. I mean, no. we started, I think it was January 2015 is when we started playing 3.5. And then we didn't really swap until like December 2016. So it was almost two years. Yeah, but we also didn't play as often back then. That's true. That's that wasn't true. our heyday. <laughs> yeah. And, and people may not know the history of Pathfinder, um, especially if you're coming from a game like 5e or if you're just new to this kind of uh, D20 system in general. Pathfinder, uh, the first edition of it that we're very familiar with, is built on top of D&D 3.5. 
uh, which is built on top of D and D three, uh, as you may presume. <laughs> uh, but basically, the big thing that happened with D and D third edition and carried over into three five was the open gaming license. It just allowed in the early in mid two thousands a ton of third party content to be made. Uh, and one of the people making third party content was Paizo. Yep. Uh, they published Dragon Magazine for a good for while. A good long while. Uh, and towards the end of 3.5's lifespan, they started developing their own campaign setting and they made what is iconic now as the adventure path for it. Uh, they had some adventures, I think, before then set in Greyhawk. Huh. Uh, but like Rise of the Rune Lords originally was a D&D 3.5 adventure. Uh, Second Darkness, I think, still is 3.5. Yeah, they never uh, converted that one. Yeah, so these that was kind of Paizo's claim to fame. And then what happened is the open gaming license got complicated when 4th edition came out. Uh, I'm not sure what the details are on that, but I know that Paizo like, lost Dragon Magazine publishing rights or whatever it was. Um, and basically, my understanding, it was going to be harder to do a lot of third-party content. So that whole ecosystem wasn't going to have as much of a role in 4th edition. And that was combined with the fact that 4th edition wasn't very well received. Mm -mm. And in hindsight, like it was kind of trying to do some things that we think are standard now, but like being digital first and whatnot. But back in like, what, 2008, 2009, like that was, it was not well received. And, you know, it has some design things that people talk about. I'm not well versed in fourth edition to kind of get into that, but I don't think it's worthwhile to become well versed in fourth edition. At this point, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> unless you're just into, you know, learning games for the sake of it, probably. Yeah. Which is something that we're known for. However, we're not. <laughs> we're not <laughs> playing fourth edition. Season four, four E. No, <laughs> not, uh, that is, uh. that is not committing. Um, but no, but basically what happened is fourth edition struggled uh, there was the whole, uh, again, I'm not sure I understand the details about it, but the issues with third-party publishing. And Paizo basically just said, well, 3.0 and 3.5 is open gaming license, so we're going to make a game that basically takes that rule set and improves upon it. And that was Pathfinder. It was called 3.75 uh, yeah. locally for quite a while. That's what we refer to it as. That's, yeah. Um, and it was basically written, if you get a first edition Pathfinder core rulebook and you don't know how to play it, it can be really hard to learn because it is kind of written for a 3-5 player to like transition into. And it fixed a lot of the things that were quirky because, you know, 3-5 was supposed to fix 3-0 and this fixed 3-5. So uh, there was a lot of iteration that it built on. And then they, you know, had this rich campaign setting they'd already built for 3-5 to go with it. You could convert all your stuff. Like when we converted our campaign, it was really easy. Oh, yeah. It was it, very painless. It helped that we were low level and didn't have very yes. many magic items. But that, yes. Sure, that helped. But like com compared to like other things, it was it was very, very easy to transition to. Um, and Pathfinder, I think for a while in like the early 2010s was as big, if not bigger than 4E uh, in terms of like tabletop RPG popularity. Um, and it, and it did great. And it, I still think it's a great game. The, the thing with first edition Pathfinder is, you know, 3.0 came out, what, 2000, 2001, I think. Mm. And 3.5 was built on top of it. Uh, and then Pathfinder 1E was built on top of that. So, you know, by the time second edition was coming out, let's 2019, that's almost like 20 years of the same game engine. And Pathfinder even if you just stick to like its rule set, it had a lot of content, which is great for people who love to crunch into that. But the power creep was really real and the balance was wonky and like it's really easy to fall for trap options. It just, if you knew the system, you could do a lot with it, but yeah. it is just notoriously difficult to bring people into, especially mm -hmm. when a game like 5e comes out and becomes really accessible. So that's why 2e is so special to us because it basically takes all the core principles of Pathfinder, which is super deep character customization. Uh, lots of things you can do in a game like 5e are flavor based and don't have a lot of mechanical, like I can't represent things, my characters in my character's backstory and abilities with like dice rolls and mechanics. Uh, you can do that in second edition and first edition and second edition does it in a way that it, it's core rule book is built to teach a new player how to build a character, which is great. Um, and Very. it's, it's still chunky and complicated, but it is nowhere near as complicated as 1E. Yeah. And the thing that stands out to me after running it for, I guess, almost two months at this point is how well balanced it is. Like, sure, it's still a tabletop game. 
balance is going to be, you know, a little weird, but it is so much more tightly balanced and controlled than any D20 system I'm used to so far. I think 5e comes close to it, but Pathfinder really stands out as that. But uh, yeah. um, it, it could be that a lot of people who are interested in, in PF2 are uh, coming from the first edition Pathfinder. So mm-hmm. they are m- more comfortable with the system, more comfortable with interacting inside of a D20 system, whereas a lot of people who are getting into 5e are just getting into D20s right. you know, like systems as a whole. So it could be a professionalism just based on the people who are migrating towards it. Yeah, I think you could teach a new RPG player Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but it's, I think so too. Oh, yeah, it's definitely absolutely. much easier. Much easier. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a bigger leap than 5e, um, but the, there's a trade off there. You know, 5e, there's, there's only so many choices you make that impact the way your character plays. And that is not true in 2nd Edition Pathfinder. There's a lot of choices and they all make a lot of like, they all give you more things to do. The thing with first edition is all your choices were about getting bigger numbers. And 2E, the math behind what you do is is kind of locked in. There's some choices about like what you want to do. The choices are more like how what kind of actions do you want you to be able to do in combat? What kind of downtime or exploration actions do you want to do? And like how you combine those actions together is the real meat and potatoes of the gameplay because the balance is a little bit more tightly controlled. It's hard to get that runaway like math that you can get in 1E, right? Yeah, Yeah, where you could get like some characters who are insane powerful and then someone who didn't know what they were doing, i.e. me, (laughs) building a character who is weak sauce. All of us in that that first That was the fault of rolling for our stats as well. Yeah, which you don't do in this game, which is pretty neat. Um, But yeah, uh, small diatribe about the history of this game aside. um, The the reason I bring all this up is, you know, this is a different kind of season for us. This is a different kind of system for us to play. Typically, you know, when we have a lot of stake in this already, but also typically, you know, when we come into a season, we read the core rule book front to back. I I can't do it with 2E. It's too big. Um, I, I can read all the parts I need. I did it. You did it. But <laughs> I'm Jacob also reading, lives for this stuff. I also yeah. have to read the adventure path and, yeah. and a lot of other stuff too. So it's, it's also important to remember that when it comes to Pathfinder 2nd Edition, for anyone who's listened that has played 1st Edition, Pathfinder 2nd Edition is not new and improved 1st Edition. It is a completely separate game. Yeah, it's completely yeah, designed. Like it. You need to read the rule book because you can't just go off your knowledge of 1st Edition. Yeah, and we, we, we're going to constantly hit our... 1e instincts like like we did with the surprise round oh yeah. yeah and talking about the constructs just you know precision damage and all that right um but yeah the, all that to say you know we care about this game a lot um it's different for us because we we're familiar with like the campaign setting we're familiar with the history of it but it's still fundamentally a game we've never really played yeah that we've wanted to play for a long time so that's why we picked it for the show um, and one thing that we're really going to try to do, and we really want you guys listening's feedback, uh, is try to teach people how to play. Uh, so like, like we do with our other stuff, whenever we encounter a new mechanic, we want to talk the process through, yeah. even if that involves me as a GM, like showing what's going on behind the scenes. Mm. Because we want you to guys to see how the game works so that you can learn it with us, especially if you're a new PF2 player, uh, so you can kind of get stuck in. So that being said, like if you have questions if you have comments if you want to yell at us if you want to yell at us you could reach out to us on social media but honestly the best way to kind of interact with our content is to go to our youtube YouTube. channel yeah Yeah. Uh, we upload a visualized version of all of our episodes on youtube and you can just comment and you can leave like a timestamp at your comment and Mm -hmm. we're pretty active responding to people there plus we got the great uh, number of viewers that comment there regularly. You could you also all, hit us up on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> you all know who you are, YouTube audience. Yeah. Um, and hey, if we do something wrong, call us out on it. Just understand that we also might not be seeing your response for a, a month or so. Half a month or a month we'll, after we'll see we've the, recorded it. <laughs> we'll see the response, but like we may not be able to get yes. back to it until like a month or more, you know, because yeah. we record ahead pretty well. So well, we have to disaster strikes all oh, the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, heaven forbid one of us wants to take a vacation. Oh yeah, oh, jeez, oh, no. Or you know, do that. gets a certain <laughs> sickness that starts with a C. Or moves. Or has both. Oh, uh-huh. rabies. <laughs> God. 
Anyway, Crabies. Crabies. <laughs> Crab and ends with a 19. Crabies 19. 19. Well, all that to say, you guys ready to play some Pathfinder? Uh, I guess. Yes. All right, then why, <laughs> why don't we break out the prompt and get right back into the action? Yeah. Just, just right. crack that thing wide open, shake yeah. it like a glow stick. Smash it all like right. an egg. Do it! Do it! Don't be a coward! Uh, Fuck it up! Centuries before the Starstone was raised, the Wizard Kings Nex and Geb warred with one another, scarring the... Scarring the land between them into a devastated, unstable magic wasteland. Sorry, Jacob was drinking a Coke really intensely in front of me, and it it, it made culminated me culminated in a still gurgle. Doing it. <laughs> From the glowing ashes of the mana wastes arose Alkenstar, the city of smog, a metropolis of airships, skyscrapers, factories, and clockwork wonders. To the world, Alkenstar is the pinnacle of innovation and determination in the face of insurmountable odds. On its streets, life in Alkenstar is a nonstop race to stay ahead of the competition, and it is here that a desperate group, hungry for revenge, living on the edge of the law, hunts for the ones who cast them out. They are the outlaws of Alkenstar. That's me. Oh, well, well. Well, well, well. All righty. Uh, so I was thinking to myself, I was wondering how long it was going to take us to level up in this adventure path. And you're throwing like nine bad guys at us right off the bat. I sure am. I get the feeling it won't take very long. I don't know. You don't know. You don't know what these uh, I really creature levels are. No idea. You're right. Well, considering they have almost as much health as me, uh, I'd say they're. That's that's about right, though. <laughs> that's the scary thing. I have a plus two to con. That's it's that's 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 twoy baby. Baby. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about how I'm going to die. Uh, uh, yeah. So when we last left you guys, you were in the middle of uh, robbing a bank. What? I know. Uh, this this one, this adventure. Want to go rob a bank? We were in the middle of getting Please caught. Please get that reference, I Jacob. Robbing a bank. <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> this adventure path starts pretty pretty hard pretty and fast. Hard. Uh, Balls to the walls, if I dare say. Fast you, had, um, you were robbing this bank. Fast, fast, baby. You were robbing this bank to get back at your uh, rival, who's who uh, has kind of screwed all of you over in different yeah. ways. Uh, he Ambrose me Muglin. Out of the church. He <laughs> led me away from my flock. <laughs> yeah, Ambrose Muglin and his uh, pal, the corrupt deputy shield marshal, Marshal Angelique. Marshal. Marshal. Angelique Marjorie Loveless. Spread. Y'all doing it again where you really don't want to start playing. I'm ready. I'm ready. You really? talking. Yeah. Because <laughs> last week it was like you guys were really afraid to start fighting. You talk a lot. Uh, I Let me see what lot. you got. Ha ha. Oh. Uh, but yeah, you're robbing this bank. You broke into the backside. Uh, you stealthily dealt with one of the clockwork handlers. Uh, In beautiful rogue fashion. Not so stealthily dealt with the next one and kind of got ambushed by two more. And just as you finished those off, uh, another one let out its signal and brought in two more from the outside. Uh, we were having a discussion before the episode about whether they showed up in the uh, description when you guys were casing. Um, doesn't if they matter. Didn't they should have because they were hidden on the GM layer. It so. doesn't matter because we went through the back anyway. However, yeah. I would have. I would like to know if they made a perception check to hear the boop boop. They did. Oh, actually. nice. Okay, I that's rolled, appropriate. I, I Thank did you. Roll this, that. Is, this is this is what it's like, people, to have a professional. Yes. Make no assumptions. Roll for everything. <laughs> I, I do roll a lot, uh, and you also uh, just not to toot my own horn, but. You can always gauge the quality of your GM by how much they hate animal companions. <laughs> that's a f- you that's monster. That's it. Fair that's point. incorrect. That is a long story that I wish I could get into every single week, <laughs> but I will not. Um, the way you traumatized me. Yes, we have talked about that. One, yes, though. we have. Yeah. We have talked about that so. before. If they get asked, we'll talk about it again because I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. You made up for it in a cool way, though. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to have these guys join the encounter as is. We're not going to re-roll initiative. Uh, oh, we're re-rolling. We're not going oh, okay. to re-roll. About to say. Where were we? Uh, we had just finished was, round four. Yeah, top of the round. Yeah. yeah. Top of the round to you. Top of the round to you. Don't do that to me. You're going to give me the Irish accent. It's, it's infectious. You're going to give me the Irish. Take it. Oh, dice. That's a really pretty thing. That is a roll. It's got a P for the 20. Yeah, it's a Pathfinder. 
That's pretty. Uh, oh, Sort of bronzy, okay. but not full bronze. So we're going to go around to the top of round five now. I'm just going to say technically these guys moved uh, together at the end of round four. I guess mechanically they should both go to the end of the round and act next time, but I've already organized them in the initiative tracker. I don't feel like doing it again. Do so, I get to go yet? This is a professional. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the top of round five. Alonzo, it's your turn. Alonzo is going to move one. Alonzo. Oh, wait, you got to. Oh, trust me. We made that joke oh, multiple yeah. times. So many times. I can't so move many. my token. It's because the game wait, is paused on, again, on. professional. How dare. I'm excited. Fun fact about Foundry here. Whenever you start a combat and you tick rounds, the clock goes up in six second increments. Oh! Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. That's so I neat. have one, two, three, four. I moved on up. Right, that's first one action. action. And then for my second action, I am going to strike with my rapier. Do it. Twelve. Not going to do it. Didn't think so. One. Striking again. All right, so that's one action to strike. And then my third action, I'm going to strike again. So I have a question. You yes. talked about tumbling through. How long is an enemy flat-footed if you tumble through? My cheat sheet does not say. I'm assuming one round. What is tumble through? It's a skill from acrobatics, and I have it as a rogue. It's like my level one rogue thing. Uh, it's a special ability. What is the special thing for rogue? Because it's not tumble through. It's tumble behind. Tumble behind. Successful tumble through leaves the target flat footed versus your next attack before the end of turn. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so I was wondering, basically, you've already spent one attack. Uh, attacking again is going to be super hard. I was wondering if you could set yourself up for next but round, but it doesn't look like it. I don't want to get in between the two. Ah, pff, why ever would you See, if to? I were to tumble behind now, I'd get myself flanked, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, so you also, moved Also, I have a chance to hit with my second one. I rolled a five last time. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you've moved up. These two guys are both at the door with one space between them. Go ahead and make your second attack. I I specifically chose not to do tumble behind because of the location. Uh-huh. Eh. Oh, so Miss part of your rogue is thing is when 12. you tumble through, they're flat-footed. They're flat-footed. Yeah. Um, That's why I tried it on that one round so for you. So tumble through is an action you can take using acrobatics. Yeah. Yes. Tumble behind is a rogue special thing that lets you make do them that flat -footed. and make them flat-footed. Yeah. Yes. So they're connected, but mine is special. And I only didn't do it because of the locations. Uh, okay, so that's your turn. Unfortunately, Failure turn. no dice. That's okay. Lamo. Um, I got one engaged in combat with me. All right, so uh, next in the order is actually going to be the gold tank broker or clockwork handler in front of you, uh, Alonzo. I okay. keep, I swear to God, I love your character, Cat. I keep so desperately wanting to call them Owen. Huh. <laughs> I know I they're not Owen. I specifically made him different, but the stupid model I found has red hair, and it's <laughs> it's killing it. So for those who don't know, uh, Cat played uh, a rogue in our very ancient 3-5 and Pathfinder campaign, like our first game. Brick's uh, ex-husband. Yeah, uh, played a rogue named Owen, and so stinky hooded human male with red hair. <laughs> <laughs> Very is loved. Always going to look like Owen in my head, and I, I can. This see, one's more clean shaven. I know Alonzo is different. I, I, I visualize that, but my brain's like, ah, redhead rogue. Owen. <laughs> Owen. <laughs> Trust me. Do you know how much I had to practice calling him Alonzo, not Owen? <laughs> I cannot even imagine. All right, so my first action is going to be to strike at you, and I got okay. a fifteen. You mean Miss. Olonzo? Okay. Olonzo. Olonzo. Uh. <sighs> Yeah, miss your attacks. Yeah, miss your I've attacks. I've got pretty high AC you, you for You suck, rogue. robot. Ha. Ha. Uh, ha. I'm going to attack again. Okay. Ooh, that's better. That is a 19 total. You hit me. Good. Uh-oh. All right, so that's going to be a total of six points of bludgeoning damage. Yikes. Oof. Duh. Not great. Oof. Uh, and then I'm going to use my third action to grab you, and you are now grappled. Okay, I will check that condition on my character sheet. Has sheets. that one been hit yet? No, these guys are both brand new. Because okay. I fine. would have hit that one, but it didn't work out. Uh, okay, that's its turn, though. I can't do anything else. Am I grabbed? Because I don't see grappled. Yeah, grabbed. Okay. 
Sorry, that's some one-y terms coming out right there. Um, all right, next in the order is going to be Psykeer, the observed, the sanctioned. I am the observer. <laughs> oh, the observer, the sanctioned. Thank you. And Jacob's checking his notes there. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to do, Psykeer? Uh, so I'm, hmm, I'm looking at doing haunting him again. Okay. So it's a 15-foot cone. If I were to stand right uh, there, I would not get Owen Lonzo. Owen <laughs> Lonzo! And would I be able to get all of them? Or would I need to stand like 15 there? Foot? Yeah. Yeah, you can get them. Can you see the uh, measurement I just put down? <gasps> Ooh. Yes. It's a yeah. little You're good. Um, quarter okay. circle arc. That's nice. Sector. All right. So I need to make fortitude saves, right? Yep. DC okay. 17. Robots This is going to be a DC saves. you should probably memorize. What's Derek? this world coming to? Uh, 12 on the first one. Ha! <laughs> Natural one on the second one. Oh! oh that's a crit fail. Basic, that's double damage. That's double damage uh, for the second one. Now, it's double the first damage one. and it's deathened. Is and the first deafened? one the one holding yes. me or the second one? The first one's holding you, so it just failed. So how much does it going to take? Dang it. Four uh, points. It takes four, yes. Uh, and that go- all goes through because it's not physical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eight for the second one, right? And it's deafened. Yep, for a minute. That's a pretty nice little cantrip. Sonic damage goes through a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, is that your turn? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you moved, and that's two actions to cast, I believe. Yes. All right. Um, okay, so next in the order is going to be Mr. Chester Williams. <laughs> what you going to do, my dude? Chester is going to roll for his devised stratagem. Of course. For one action. And it's a 16 on the die. So what Chester's going to do is for uh, what is basically a free action, he's going to drop his rapier. Right. He is going to reach onto his back and pull out his flintlock must- musket. That's one action, right? Yep. Okay. And because it's a gun and, you know, it would make no sense for it to not already be loaded, he is going to point it at the robot that is holding Alonzo. Okay. And he is going to shoot. Uh, okay, so you are shooting around this corner here. This is, it's got cover. Yes. Uh, I have a 16 on the die for a total of 23. 23. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of cover it has. I don't think you're gonna, you're gonna hit it. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, that's gonna be 1d6 and an additional 1d6 for the precision damage. I get a 1d10 if I critical with it. Okay. Uh, so that's gonna be 4 and... Five for a total of nine. Nine points of damage? Yes. All right, that will get reduced, but uh, that hurts it. It's still up, unfortunately. And all of you are not deafened, but you shoot a gun in, like, a enclosed uh, stone it's temple. fine. We're Just fine. And that little echo? I think uh, stealth is fair to say has Listen, uh, left the building. Their alarms are probably louder than my gun. Uh, you're probably right. To be fair, uh, so how many actions are we looking at for that? That is all three. Devise a stratagem, draw the gun, fire the gun. Uh, okay. That's so your why gun... you didn't turn the corner. Correct. Yeah, your gun is unloaded uh, for next turn, so keep that in mind. Yep. Uh, sweet. That's your turn. The last clockwork handler here, the one that is not grappling, not Owen, Alonzo. It's his go, and he is going to move up towards Psykeer because mm-hmm. uh, that stuff hurt and I don't think being deafened is going to hurt any of my stuff right now unfortunately. Can a construct be deafened? My understanding is they can hear. It's not in, It's not under their condition immunity so nice. sure. Um, okay so, but he is going to uh, try to grab you, uh, attack you and then grab you so one action to attack uh, ooh 90 14 for a total yep. of 21. That's yep, a yep, hit. Yep, 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 yep. That's not a crit, is it? No. My, right. it's, it's 15. All right. So you're going to take six points of bludgeoning damage. He's going to spend his second action to grab you, or third action rather, because he did have to move. Uh, and that's going to be his turn. So you are now grabbed as well. Um, fun fact, though, as a spellcaster in this game, I don't think being grabbed inhibits your ability to cast spells. Does not appear so. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, that was the infamous grapple flow chart from Pathfinder First Edition lives rent free in my head. It's not, it's not that bad. <laughs> Shut up. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, all right, but that's its turn. We're going to go to round six, and 
And uh, starting off the round is a Mr. Alonzo Tinrivet. What do you want to do? So while I'm grappled, excuse me, grabbed, immobilized, and flat-footed, am I still allowed to attack? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Basically, the only thing you can't do is move away. You can't move away without making a check. Um, they and get I could some, attempt an escape. They basically get bonuses against you, more or less. Um, that, and if you wanted to, like, get something out of your person, like, if you wanted to draw something, I oh, think that's, yes. you'd have to make a, a, fi- a DC-5 flat check. But um, basically, you can attack, and you don't even yeah. take penalties to it. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that on my sheet, which is why I was confused. Well, Alonzo does not like this. I imagine. And he angles his rapier at a slightly less advantageous angle, but it's super close, and thanks well, I can stab real deep now. <laughs> That's going to be a natty 12 for a 19. That's going to hit. Yeah. Alonzo, uh, he stabs constructs like he picks locks. Which is really good. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, roll your he damage for me. He looks for the holes. Oh. Um, damage is going to be 1d6 plus 4. <laughs> Which is nine damage. Yeah. Nine damage will be reduced. However, <gasps> mm-hmm. how would you like to describe your kill on this guy? I like to imagine that this rapier comes out the other side because he's that close. Mm-hmm. He pushes it right in all the way up to the fancy hilt. Yeah. And it's like uh, every time you guys fight these things, I just think about Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh-huh. It's like making those <laughs> spitting like oil. Uh, and in this case, like steam sputtering out of like broken yeah. pipes, uh, and it just it's light dims and it fades. I probably have like really red, red hot hands right now from all the steam. All right, so you are no longer grappled, grappled, haha, <laughs> grab. Oh, no longer that, grappled. That's only one action for you. So uh, what oh, would you I like got, to do? I got, I got some plans. I am going to uncheck this grabbed. Thank you. And uh, can I, do I have to tumble through or tumble behind in a perfectly straight line? Or can I go off to the side a little bit? I'll allow you to tumble through for this um, if you would like. Okay, well, I'm going to attempt to tumble through and get on the other side of this thing. So you're rolling against my, is it reflex or athletics DC? It's a reflex DC. Reflex? Okay, mm-hmm. go ahead and roll. Come on. I got an Addy one. Oh no! So that's gonna fail. I think you stay in place, and I go. I get to take my yep. attack of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, the question I have is, if if uh, it's got uh, Psychir grabbed, can it do its reaction? I know there was stuff about that in Oney. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Referencing Oney again. <laughs> yeah, I know. If we got it. We're, we're learning. Uh, so I'm, what I'm gonna say is, because this guy has two arms. Uh, He's just got Psych here with one hand and yeah. is smacking with the other. I don't think I'll let him grab uh, Alonzo. <laughs> or, or just smack <laughs> with Psych here. Just wham. I'll beat this PC with another PC. Uh, I'm not going to let him grab Alonzo, but I will let him strike out. That makes sense. That All would right. be really fucking funny. It would be really funny, though. Just grab you and can't do anything. However, now that I'm no longer grabbed, my AC is back to usual. Uh, ooh, but I rolled a 25. Thankfully, that's ooh. not a critical. Okay, it was a natty 18. Uh, you are going to take, again, six points of bludgeoning oh, damage. Oh, I am oh. very hurt. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So very, very hurt. You still have one action left, because you failed that, uh, but that was only your second action. If you want to take another attack, you can. Um. Swing. Just swing. I'm just going to swing. Alrighty. The best way to keep myself from getting dead is to dead the the automaton, right? Yeah. It's my second swing in the round, so I only get a plus two. Uh, and keep in mind, this guy is still hurt from Sykir's previous thingy, uh, the ouchie noise. Oh, now that's much better. What'd you that's get? That's a natty 19 for a 21. 21 will hit, not a crit, but that yeah. will hit. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage for me. I don't think I can crit on a second go. Uh, you could get a natural 20. True, true. So the damage is eight damage. Right, D6 eight damage. plus four. And that is going to take it down. He is still up, but is very hurt at this point. Uh, okay, the other one's dead, so it's now going to be Psyche's turn. turn. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You are grabbed, but I don't think that inhibits your spellcasting stuff. Can I just tilt my head back and uh, I'm screaming him? Uh, another use of that cantrip? Yes. Absolutely. Such a cool one. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll Fortitude again. Yes, sir. 
Uh, that's a natural four, so that's 14. Nope, 17. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, that's another four. Four points of damage. Yeah. Uh, Is it dead? You. It's got plus four? Plus 10? Yeah. Wow. So you, it's his best save. Uh, you oh. scream at this thing, and you just see the like lens where the eye is just shatter and go out, and like maybe some like vacuum tubes on it just bust, and bolts come out, and its arms fall off, holding you. They're still gripped to you, but they just kind of fall limp, and the machine falls over dead. And none of you can hear this. Sakir just opens their mouth, looks at this thing, and it dies. Yeah, that's kind of nice. terrifying. It's eerie. Well, that's spooky. And you are now out of combat. Should we get to that safe? All right, first off, how's your health points? <laughs> Straight up asking them. Like, just, hey, that was you know. me. My, vo- my voice changed. What is your health? My, my boy is like holding in a bloody, a bloody side. He's got three hit points out of 20. And psych here? 14 out of 20. Uh, all right, so what he'll do is he's going to walk up to Saikir. He's going to tap some stuff on his vest, shake up a vial, and pop a vial in your mouth and say, drink. Drink. <laughs> it, it'll cure what ails you. Uh, I'm going to mutter around this the flesh is weak as I down it. Um, and that's going to be, uh, uh, that is the healing elixir, yeah. which I believe is a D6. Oh, uh, nice. Which is a four on the die, so you get four, I believe. Uh, oh, so you oh, get four oh, hit oh. points, and if you want to work on Alonzo, Alonzo. that was yeah. uh, his thought process. My... Right, so you guys are basically, you're in, quote, uh, exploration mode now? Well, that was mm-hmm. like a single action thing that I did. Oh, that was my quick item. tincture. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, oh, I only take two. I only take two because I am... Leaking positive Dang energy it. right now. You're right, yeah, I forgot you're about still that. Under the effect of your curse. Well, I tell you what, that was a that was a bit more than I thought it would be. I didn't anticipate getting this hurt. I'm gonna do uh, treat wounds, which means that I need to roll an eleven. All right, so that's gonna be a like uh, exploration mode activity. I'll take ten minutes. It's a ten. I didn't make it. Ten. So. That's not a critical failure, but what no. does that mean? It means I get no do health. Do you have to huh? wait another 10 minutes before you can do it again? What's the time limit on uh, treat wounds? It's an hour. Oh, once per hour. You can get it once per hour, and it takes 10 minutes to do. All right, then. I'm going to tr- I'm gonna use my other focus point to do, uh, or, or I'm going to switch my lifelink, which is going to be my other focus point. Does it cost a focus point to switch the target of your lifelink? I say switch. I'm just I'm casting it again. It leaves after a minute anyways. Ah, I gotcha. So, but this will put you at moderate curse, I believe. Mm-hmm. So moderate curse for Uh-oh. you, uh, the flow of life energy away from you can't be reversed. In addition to the effects of your minor curse, you can't be healed by magical effects or originating from other creatures. However, if you are unconscious, magical effects can restore you to one hit point, but no higher. Uh, you are affected normally by healing elixirs, potions, and other items. When you cast heal on all your targets or living creatures, uh, you will give them d12s instead of d8s for the amount of healing. So the cool thing about Oracle, uh, it's just like you're playing this risky game using your focus abilities, which are mm-hmm. like pseudo spells. But like whenever you get to the moderate level curse, there's some fun benefits to it too. It's real risk yeah. reward. So I'm gonna roll a d4. That is a three. You get three back. Okay, three hit points back for you. Uh, now just protecting uh, Alonzo from damage or does it keep giving him hit points? Uh, It is just hit points on the first time. Okay. How many hit points are you sitting at there, um, Psyche here? Right now I am at 16. Okay. I'm at six. Boy. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I will reduce the next t- hit you take by three, if you take a hit. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> I got blood on my nice shirt. And as I use this focus point, Psyche here starts crying silver tears. That don't look good. You Are you leaking positive energy right now to the people uh, around you? Yes, but it's not like going to affect you. Oh, really? You just don't okay. like it. Yeah. Huh? Well, I mean, if, if like, if it's being... not like a radiation. Okay. Like it's, a... There's no aura. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> it's good more to know. like <laughs> if, if you were to try and heal Psyche with yeah. positive energy, it would just kind of pour right out. Yes. Yeah. So 
Uh, just jump in real quick here. So Psykir tried to do treat wounds. Does that mean you, Chester, could do treat wounds, or...? I believe a person can only receive treat wounds once an hour. Even if the attempt fails? Gosh. Yes. Okay. Cool. I believe so. Unlock the vault. Let us claim our prize. Um, let me just describe the room you're in here, because we kind of rushed through all this with combat. Let me give you some flavor text, now that you're <laughs> not uh, facing down, you know, constructs. Worn stone floors and threadbare furniture define the aesthetic of this establishment. A central wooden table crosses parallel to the doors, creating a barrier between those waiting for the teller and the long wooden half wall bisecting the room to the north and south. Iron bars stand uh, on top of this half wall, reaching nearly to the ceiling and ending in sharp points. Sounds of business being carried out. This is this is written with the intention of you being here to the day. What? The sounds of business being carried out echo throughout this large chamber, which carries to the dusty door of uh, the dusty odor of decaying furniture. Uh, but also, the southern half of this room consists of teller stations and two wooden doors flanking a large metal vault door, which you pass by oh. on six inch thick hinges. So, what you see is those teller stations. Uh, mm -hmm. You also see two doors to your uh, north, east, and northwest. I'll ping them for you guys. And these are both closed. There's the door you guys came through. Uh, whenever you ran into that middle hallway, you saw the vault. Um, and then there is another door in that middle area uh, opposite the vault. Well, let's go open the vault. Yeah, if it takes... What is your hit points at now? Six. I can give you a healing elixir. It would be appreciated. That's like one hit. He'll he'll uh, pop another vial off of his chest, shake it up, and you get six hit points back. Oh, hey, that's great. That now I'm at 12. Max that is I much do. better. And I have one more quick tincture I can do before we have to do a long rest. Okay. Tastes like metal, but feels that's good. That's just the blood. I think you mean it tastes like home, just as good as Mama used to make. Thank you very much. I thought it was your father who was the vampire. Uh-huh. My mom was the one who taught me how to do my mixins. Intriguing. Yeah, my dad was just a farmhand. <laughs> People often be like that when they find out that they, oh, your daddy's a vampire. He's got to be some special guy. Nah, he's just a guy. Yeah, undead. Eight people, but just a guy. Along is, those like, Is he <clears throat> still undead? Oh, you mean is he alive? Oh, I don't know. One day he left to go milk the cows shortly before dawn, and I ain't seen him since. Found the bucket on the road, but we don't know what happened to him. Shortly before dawn. That's an odd way to emphasize what I said, but yeah, yeah. And he'll start making his way towards the bank <laughs> yeah, vault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alonzo's just like, oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> does, how, how do you feel about sunlight? Oh, sunlight's fine with me. I'm just a, I think the technical term is dampire, where I, I, I'm just a bit pale, but like, I'm fine with the sun. I, I don't have to drink no blood. Uh, the positive energy hurts, but that's about it. That's good. I got some sharp teeth, which is really cool. He'll smile, big old smile. But that's all. This is there for so, show. So, uh, I'm going to try and pick. I, I want to study that lock and pick it. I got, I want to get into the vault. And I'd like to investigate the teller stands while uh, he is uh, doing the vault. Teller stands, you say? Yes. Uh, okay, so, yeah, why don't you make me a perception check, uh, Chester, and then Alonso. Can I? I'm going to say make me a quick thievery check. Can I do detect magic to just see if there's any, like, little magical trap or something? Sure. I will nice. wait for that. <laughs> uh, the, uh, in another adventure, there would be a lot more magical traps in something like a bank, but here you, there's absolutely nothing. We're level okay. one. <laughs> uh, my perception check. Oh, oh, sorry. It's okay. My perception check was a 24. Uh, okay. And uh, if an hour happens to go by, cause like we're working on a vault, maybe it's more complicated or something like that. Let us know. Cause then we could do another roll. Right. What was your total perception one more time? 24. 24. With a 24. And uh, that is an extra one for like secret doors or traps. So 25 if there's like a secret door or trap. Okay. Well, with a 25 <gasps> and not a 24, uh, you look through, there's like this just teller's desks. Um, <gasps> but with a 25, oh. you find a hidden compartment. Oh! oh! that contains a key. Oh, 
does key. Oh my god. Does the vault have a lock on it? Like a key lock? The vault. You're about to make my amazing roll totally obsolete. Well, he is doing this while you're doing yours, so you could beat me to the but punch. But isn't there a door? So yeah, you find a key. Oh. We'll leave it at that. A key? Uh, you a also, key. well, a actually, key. you also find <gasps> five Even silver more gold? pieces. Damn it. <sighs> Worthless. Silver sucks. What? <laughs> I've hold, hold on now. Uh, okay. <laughs> we and need then, to focus on not silver first. We need to focus on platinum and gold. Oh, yes, but yeah. like, y- 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 those go in the bag. Y- this is for us. What was okay. your thievery check, Alonso? <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> the natty 20. For a total of? Uh, 28, if you count oh. a plus one for my thieves' oh my tools. Oh, my God. 28. That's so good. So what you realize is, uh, I'm just going to roll your check over into this. Uh, without a check, you realize that to open the vault, you need a combination, and there's also a simple lock. Ah. Oh. Um, the combination will require three successful thievery checks, uh-huh. and I'm going to count that one as a first successful one. Ooh. Actually, I'll, I'll go a step further, and because you got a critical success. I was going to ask. That's what it says in the... Yeah, I'll let it count as two. Yes! So you'll still need to get another one. Um and then you'll need either a key or some more thievery checks to overcome the lock. The combination's the harder part of this though. Uh, basically what this looks like is Alonzo's pressing like his ear up and is trying to like crack the the vault by listening to it and dialing in the combination. Uh, so make me another thievery check here. All right. And would I get my bonus for the, for the pick a lock? Because I'm imagining there's more than just lock picks to lock picking. Uh, or would I not? Because you say it's more like a This is not lock picking. Okay, so then it would have just been a 27. Well, that doesn't matter. You still got a natural okay. 20. That's still too, that's critical success. All right, well, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. That do is it. a 19 non-natural. N- mm. Total of 19? Yes. All right, that is not a success. Oh. Um, is It's not a critical failure, though, is it? It is not a critical failure. The thing is, this will require three consecutive ah, crap on a cracker. What? Thievery checks. Um, so you'll have to roll again. Can I help? Uh, you can help with perception. Um, let me check I the will rules. Take the help. Uh, or rather, this is something you can also do with perception, but I'm going to check the rules for aid real quick here. That's kind of scary because that was a natty 13 on Yeesh. the die. We could also check this room to the east and see if, like, maybe there's a combination lying around somewhere. Because no matter how many times someone is told, don't write your password down, they will always write their password down. Yeah, we down. need to look on the back of the monitors at the kiosks. Yeah. What about uh-huh. on the key? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you aid Alonzo, uh, Alonzo will get a plus two, it looks like. Okay. So Alonzo kind of steps back. What is aid like specifically? So, uh, so you can do this check if with. If I if I aided, would that have passed? What would you get? I got a ten in total. Ten total? No. Damn it. Um, so you can do this check with thievery or perception. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, you need it's DC twenty for both. Oh. So mm. and you need three consecutive. So, so I will let you aid with perception, but you'll still have to hit twenty. So Alonzo steps back. Damn it. Well, that ain't going good. Good news, I found a key. You could have said that earlier. Well, don't you? I heard you muttering. You still need to figure out the, the combination numbers, whatnot. But here, he'll hand you the key. Alonzo kind of, you know, steps back, brushes some dust off of his coat. Mm-hmm. We may want to look for a combination. Well, let's take a look over here then. And he'll uh, walk over to the door. This is stiff stuff. And he'll step in front of the door. Okay. With his, oh yeah, by the way, he, he picked up his rapier earlier. <laughs> With his rapier drawn, uh-huh. uh, he yeah. will open yeah, I draw the door. Mine too. Uh, well, you try to open the door, the door is locked. I, use I try to the key. The key. Uh, the key does not work on it. Okay. I'm going to give it a try with my lock picks. Is it a standard looking lock, not a combination this time? Yeah, it's, it looks pretty average. So then I could use my lock picks and get a plus one. Absolutely. All right. I got an 18. Oh, 18 is ah. totally good enough. Uh, you unlock the door. <gasps> it must have been a very standard lock. 
Uh, yeah, it was. It's pretty pretty box standard. Let me uh, describe this room real quick for you. It's full of a thousand spears that jump out of there us are and we die. So many robots. Uh, no, <gasps> this ah. elaborately decorated office oh. has mahogany wall panels <gasps> and a matching desk. With I a immediately just start clawing at them. That <laughs> is mahogany. With a surface so shiny, it's reflective. Uh, a pair of reflective. comfortable couches are nestled in the northwest and northeast corners of the room. Uh, two very healthy-looking potted plants stand next to each other, uh, or excuse me, stand on either side of the desk. Pardon me, I can't read. Uh, flanking uh, a large credenza. The only exit to this room is to the north, which is where you are entering. You said this pots. This is why you couldn't play a druid, because the outrage at this man for containing nature would be too high. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> uh, but more importantly, uh oh! Uh, as soon as you step through uh, the door, I never said I stepped through. Or rather, as soon as they open the door, more robots. Uh, are you opening it stealthily? Yes. Do you want me to roll stealth? Are you sure? Are you sure you're not doing that just because I asked? Yeah, go no, ahead, I would have. Roll stealth. I mean, so long as lock picking I'm, didn't I'm, ruin me, stealth. We're robbing a bank. We're doing I'm, everything stealthily. Yeah, let's just assume that it's everything I do is stealth. shooting a gun in the bank. Sir, it's, calm I didn't shoot down, the gun. sir. Yeah, 10. Yeah, you open the door, <laughs> and you're trying to be all quiet, and it goes... <laughs> And as soon as the door is open, uh, I'm going to need you guys to roll initiative. Okay. Oh, All boy. right. And I need to roll a thing. And I didn't actually get to roll stealth this time. <gasps> oh. Derek. Uh-huh. Bell Spring Surge. Did, oh, did, did you do it? Did you roll a flat check? I rolled check? a four. All right. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's roll initiative right now. I don't like the looks of this. There's three dice on the screen. Uh-oh. All right. So. You need to back up. It's <laughs> like here, what did you get for initiative? 13. 13. Oh, hey, that's what I rolled for you. Ha ha. Yeah. Chester, what did you get for initiative? 16. 16. Uh, Alonzo. 7. Oh no. Alrighty. Babe. Oof. Big oof. Uh, okay, so first in the order is someone you don't see yet. Oh. Alonzo, you open the door, uh, and as soon as your like, profile becomes visible, you get shot. You hear, oh, shot oh rings out at you, and I'm going to make an attack roll here. Not a great roll. Uh, that's going to be a 18. Oh. And I'm assuming I'm flat-footed. No, I don't think it works. It like meets that. my I, AC exactly. Then I hit. Mm. Now, question. Yeah. Can Alonzo see this person in the room? No, they they rolled stealth for initiative. Oh, so they don't they like no cover. Uh, they are like hiding behind something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which yeah. you can do with a gun. I looked yeah. into that. Yeah. So it's gonna hit. Uh, no. Oh come on. Sneak attack stuff or anything like that. Oh, actually, haha. There is sneak attack. Oh, oh. I'm down. <laughs> I can't make this shell. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Will I absorb three? Yes. Okay. Uh, but that's just going to be a normal hit. Uh, this is going to be two points of piercing damage plus okay. six points of sneak oh. attack damage. So that's eight total. Minus three from yep. Psyche here. So I so get five. You'll take five points of damage. Uh, and after this shot rings out, you see uh, behind the desk, this is what you see. It's what the person looks like holding a pistol uh, directed at you. Um, that's one action. Uh, actually, as you, uh, as you as this happens, you open the door, Alonzo, make a perception check. Okay. 22. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you see, uh, you can see that there's a, a human woman. Uh, so the, the person in front of you right now, sorry, I didn't describe it for the you know audio listeners, which is everyone, uh, <laughs> is this dwarven, uh, if you knew kind of dwarven culture around here, it's a Dongun dwarf uh, woman with like a helmet and everything on holding a pistol. Um, but you can see also Alonzo that also be hiding, hiding behind the desk is a human woman with uh, black hair. Uh, and with the over 20 perception, you see that like part of her like shoulders exposed a little bit 
Oh. oh. Um, There's some hokey pokey going on here. So that was one action. <laughs> <laughs> what, is she going to roll to fuck her, her, her lover? Uh, you know what? It's not in the character sheet, but I can allow it. Um, her wife? Are they wives? I'm going to spend my second action to reload. Well, they're all waifus, cause... Die. Uh, <laughs> I'm just scared of dying, okay? Can we just move on? Hey, listen, just gotta focus to yourself and remember, dying. I can't be healed, and I am actively taking shots for you. I appreciate it, because I would have been way worse off. <laughs> oh, that's why they didn't hear us fighting. Oh, they, they were effing. They may have heard us fighting. And that's just why chose bing! not to bother. That's why she was, well, they didn't want to come out there because we were shooting guns and destroying robots. They were waiting yeah. in here to see if we were to come in there. That is a good point. Uh, I don't really have, I can take another shot, but it's going to be. You have to reload, then take a shot? Yeah, What's I already reloaded. Reload? I shot her. and I reloaded. I just uh, don't know what I want to do for the third one because. Move closer. <sighs> <sighs> All right, I'm going to try this thing. Uh, she, what you're going to see her do is kind of get a sense of all of you and see that you're already kind of hurt, Alonzo. Mm-hmm. I think she's just going to take another shot at you nah. um, instead of trying to spend the special stuff here. Uh, um, I bet it's a natural seven yeah. for a total of... Yeah, that's not going to hit. It's like 11. Okay. Oh. Or 12, I think. <sighs> Good. Uh, not a lot. All righty. So that's that. Next in the order is going to be Chester. What you want to do, my dude? Chester is. I'll do an action for to devise a stratagem. Okay. Uh, it's not a very good roll, so. It's a smidgety, smidgety, smidgety. Smidgety? Oh. His healing is not great, so that wouldn't be a good thing to fall back on. Um. Poot. Ah, poot. Chester's going to use his last alchemical sciences quick tincture. Okay. He is going to... He'll drink the last one, and it is going to be a mutation, a mutagen, by the name of the Draken Heart Mutagen. Okay. It's going to increase his AC by a good little amount, give him a plus one to perception, which doesn't stack with the Eagle Eye Elixir. Okay. Um, and that's all he can do, because to make it is one action, to drink it is another action. Uh, and that is his third action. That just gives you some boosts and stuff. Okay. Yeah, increase my AC, and he'll be like, Alonzo, if you's hurt, you let me go first. You just got to get out of my way. And that's the end of his turn. Can't he go through his? Oh, he yeah. can go through my space. I can't move. So yeah. So next in the order is going to be Psyche here. What do you want to do? Now, here's a question. Okay. I can't split my movement up, can I? No, the way you would do that in this game is you would spin one action to move, do a thing, and then spin another action to move. Uh, okay. There really isn't much I can do. Do you want to uh, delay? Hmm? Oh, did we? We didn't resolve your uh, uh, flat check. Nope. For your wild yeah. surge. Uh, so you failed the flat check, right? Yep. Uh, okay. That means fun things are going to happen. Better late than never. Yeah. I, I completely forgot about that. So, Wellspring Mage, when you fail the flat check, you roll on a table. Uh, would you mind rolling a d20 for me? A natural one. Natural one? Oh, boy. Uh-oh. So for those who uh, are more familiar with a game like 5e, Wellspring Mage is... Uh, the Wellspring... Wild magic is, is ...is very similar to uh, Wild Magic, uh, but it's an archetype instead of like a bloodline or something. I have it pulled up. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, number one on a d20 oh. is going to be Energy Unleashed, parentheses, Evocation. Raw Uh-oh. Energy deals 2d6 damage per spell level, which is only going to be one. Basic reflex save and a 10 foot burst. Uh, so Uh-oh. Al- Alonzo okay. and uh, Chester, I need you to make some reflex saves, unfortunately. This is going to be a really important reflex save. And it's your DC is 17, right? Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. My reflex is really good. <laughs> okay. I got a 19. Okay. 24. Oh. 24. Okay. So you both will take half. Yep. Uh, that might be enough for. Go uh, ahead and roll 2d6 for me. Well, that one's a three, and that one's a six. Nine, so that's going to yeah. be four points of damage. I'm still up. How about you? Oh, uh, I was at full. You, so. Chester, you don't take all of that. Oh, how much? You? I take one, don't I? I absorb three. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay now? 
We'll find out. Oh, okay. You you have only taken what six damage so far? Is the flesh weak? Flesh might be weak. Uh, you were at sixteen when we started, as far as I can remember. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, is that what else do you want to do for your turn? We we dealt with the wellspring thing. Um, you could. I think you still got first level spells. No. If you want to? Oh, you don't. No more. I have no more first level spells. Dang. Level one characters don't Le- get much. Level yeah. one. Level, level one. one. Do you have like a crossbow or something? I have cantrips and I have a crossbow. Uh, I mean, one thing you could do is just delay and let Chester get in and kind of back up everything else. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, so do I take the damage from the wellspring thing? It didn't look like it. I'll look at it again. 10 foot burst. You are not excluded from its effects. Uh, so I did roll a good reflex save, if that counts. What'd you roll? A 17. Uh, oh, okay, good. so yeah, you pass. You'll take uh, four points of damage. Ah, are you okay? Now things yes. are getting spicy. spicy. I am at six. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you and I are at the exact same oh, thing number-wise. Uh, yeah, so uh, do you have any idea what you want to do? I mean, you just don't got a lot of options right now. Uh, I will continue forward with Forbidding Ward. Okay. So that'll give who a bonus? On Alonzo. All right, so you're going to have a bonus to AC. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to need that. Two actions. Anything else you can do for your third? Wait, fuck. The reason I didn't do this in the first place is because I need to target the enemy. I'll just ah, let it, I'll just thank let it you. slide. Thank you. To fuck. move things along. Yes, um, okay. No, nothing else. That's We're good. Everything's right. fine. Sweet. Um, then, Alonzo, it's going to be your turn. Uh, you do have a AC boost for the next little bit here. What do you want to do? It looks like you can get into melee with her. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, okay. That's one movement. Uh, okay, and then you got two attacks. And I'm going to attack twice. Sweet, go for it. Two strikes. Come on, I need to do some damage. Nat 20. Oh my goodness. 27. <laughs> that's a critical. So, fun fact, when you look at her, um, because you came in at nighttime uh, and you made this perception check, uh, you notice that her armor, while it is on, <gasps> is not uh, completely strapped on correctly and has loose oh, spots. Oh, they were it's canoodling. Um, it's um, hastily <laughs> donned. Hastily donned. <laughs> yeah. They were canoodling. Uh, that's going to be a critical. Uh, her, I'll just peel back the veil. Her written AC is normally 19, but oh. it dropped to 17 because <laughs> it's hastily donned. That means I perfectly made the critical. Yeah, you did. So well, you got a natural 20, so you critical anyway. You would have critical anyway. Yeah. yeah, so go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, okay, you will so not get, I get sneak attack. I get, a D, I get the D6 plus three, plus four, then I get another D6 because it's times two. No, right? you just roll your normal damage, D6 plus four, double but that, and then do you Do I double add, the plus four? Yes. Okay. You, you, you roll two D6 plus four. Oh! Plus, Oh, Max it's not damage, okay. so that's 10 doubled is 20, okay. and then you I get your, the D8. Your yeah. D8 of deadly. The deadly D8? Yep. Which rolled a three, so that's 23 damage. Nice. 23 damage does not uh, take her uh, down or anything. Um, but it it's sure a helps. Serious, it's actually a serious wound. Um, it's gotta help. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, Worth wow. It. So what actually happens, that's the end of round one. Wait, I haven't even attacked child. twice. That oh, was just ahead. my first attack. Yeah, go ahead, finish what? your attacks. Can I make an offer to this person? Uh, oh, I think, I think <laughs> yeah. the sword is still swinging, so <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, roll Alonzo again. Alonzo doesn't stop. I don't hit. All right, it's, do not hit. It's a 17. I mean, it's a seven. Yeah, so that'll be the end of round one, top of round two. Uh, so she is like wounded now, like grievously wounded uh, from your attack. (laughs) And uh, she's just like, stop, stop, God, whatever you need. Who are you people? What are you doing? Midnight? You just robbing this place? What do you want? Y'all hearing this? (laughs) She sticks her hands up. Is the fight over unless we continue it? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Chester is fine with not murdering. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello, child. We'll move inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> she like coughs up a little like, bit of blood. What, what'd you expect? People to rob it in the middle of the day? Didn't expect nobody to rob this place. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I suppose. Jesus. I pass you a handkerchief. She starts like binding it. Thanks. Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. Is there a window in this room? 
Uh, no, there is not a window in this room. completely closed off? Well, actually, I take that back. Um, so there isn't one described, but if but I'm the, looking at the map, it looks like there's a window okay. to the outside. It's, I'll ping it for you guys. Yeah, I see that. that. It's got light coming out from vision. But I'm going to, what I'm going to say is because it's not in the description it's of the room, up. it's probably barred All up. Right. Yeah. So there's two people in here. Yeah, there's two people. The other one, uh, you'll see if you guys come into the room and come around. The she's violent one and the canoodler. Yeah, the canoodler. Uh, it's this human woman, black hair, is dressed loosely. Um, <laughs> Hostile. <laughs> hastily she dressed. She appeared to be armed. She is not armed. Oh, uh, we will we will take the weapons of the person. She also appears to have a like bank employees outfit on. Uh, oh, so they work together. That's Excuse not me. professional. I so I don't make the rules. Um, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna need that gun. And we require information if you would be willing to share with us. Yeah, listen, we ain't gotta hurt nobody while we're here. We ain't here to hurt people. We thought there was just robots. We will if we have to, but if you listen up, we won't have to do anything more than what we have. With stunning efficiency, might I add. Uh, so we'd like to take their weapons and uh-huh. probably pat the lady down to make sure she doesn't have any other weapons. Uh, you pat her down. So she begrudgingly gives up her pistol. What type of pistol? It's a flintlock pistol. I would be quite obliged to receive this. Yeah, she just has a, a flintlock pistol. She says, what do you, what do you guys want? Gah. We are here to rob this bank. Okay. A combination would be nice. Why'd you come in here shooting at me? Uh, you shot first. Why are you coming in the bank shooting people up? Of course I'm going to shoot if someone comes to the door. I didn't shoot no person. I shot a robot. Ease, my children. Ease. You don't see this big. We just need information. Wound. What, what information do you need? A combination would be nice. I don't know the combination. Only Muglin knows that. Do you happen to know anything about him that would lead you to make an educated guess? What are you doing? An educated guess? I wonder if she hit the panic button. Yeah, that was, uh, what I thought about that during the fight. I want to look underneath the desk for a panic button. I don't believe there is a panic button here. Uh, are you doing a perception in this room? I mean, I'd like to. I mean, we could search the desk and all that. Just cause she's saying it doesn't mean she's telling the truth. I'll do perception too, if that's okay. Uh, are you just letting her stay there? Uh, no, well, we're we'll, gonna we're gonna, like put her in the chair. We'll shove her to a corner or onto the into the corner where those plants are. Her and her her and her uh her bow her bow. There Gently. we go. Her and her bow. We'll shove them into the corner where the plant is. Okay. I just I just motion right here. Stand over there. I implore you to be gentle. I didn't. I just motioned with the rapier. She shot us. So <laughs> there ain't nothing gentle about that bullet. I cannot ask any modicum of decency from this one, but I can ask it of you. Aye, fair enough. M- mumbles under his breath. That being said, my dear, did you say your name? What are all your perception bonuses? I have a plus Six. seven as of right now. Uh, four. Plus an additional one for secret doors and traps. All of you notice, I, I wanted to get this out of the way, but I got caught up while you were role playing. Um, whenever she says she doesn't know the combination to anything, uh, sounds like bullshit. Ah. Uh, but yeah, you tie her up. She says her name, my name, Erkim, Erkim Dresh. I'm the manager of the bank. Now this is the woman in the armor or? Woman in the armor. Okay. Dwarf woman in the armor. I have a dis- I have a diplomacy of seven. Could I try to talk to this yes, person? Yes, try that. What do you say? My dear Lady Erkham, I only ask that you be honest with us. We offer you a humble ceasefire in exchange for merely a combination. Is the life of you and this lovely creature that you are accompanying not worth it? Uh, make a diplomacy check. <laughs> uh, that was a 16 plus 7. 23. Yeah. Math. Uh, with a 23, I'll say, fine, just don't hurt us, all right? The combination's written in a envelope under my desk in the drawer. You have my word and the word of those I accompany. Much obliged. I promise all my name is <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> 
you look like a Jeffrey. Oh, I thank you. You can't tell because I'm wearing the bandana, but I appreciate it. I, I, it is my real name. <sighs> oh, yeah, we are disguised. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I look like a hairless cat. Uh-huh. I'm, uh, a, I'm a sphinx person. Disgusting. Uh, I have a snidely whiplash mustache now. And you were going through her... Chester looks exactly like Chester. <laughs> Except for the bandana. <laughs> the bandana because no one would expect that. No one would expect the damp here. No, he has a good disguise. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so you're going through her stuff, right? Yes. yes. Oh, we totally rifle uh, through the stuff. You asked for a perception check earlier. Was that to see if she was lying... Uh, no, because she I did rolled roll to lie that. against your perception DC. Could, oh, okay. Could I try to start patching this woman up? Uh, do you want to spend 10 minutes doing uh, first aid? While they're cracking the safe. Why yeah, sure. And loading up. Yeah, yeah. why not? I mean, we can crack the safe and... Lo- you could start trying to get focus points back so you could heal people or be ready for the next combat. But if you I want to heal the villain bandage. NPC, that's nice to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm messing. I'm messing. I'm just saying. Well, I make it this time. Nice. Okay, sure. How many hit points is that? Uh, 2d8? No, it's 2d12 because of your thing, right? Yes, because I'm currently cursed. Yeah, go ahead and roll me 2d12. And I'm assuming you tie On her up. On your medicine check? I think any healing. I'll Whoa. double check. Awesome. Uh, can't be healed by magical. In contrast, when you cast heal, all your target. Okay. Oh, it's only it when you use the heal oh. spell, so 2d8. Yeah, okay. About to say, that's awesome. That would be pretty snazzy. Uh, nine. Nine? Yes. When did I get hit? Uh, yeah, she... Oh, because of you. Because <laughs> of the explosion. Yeah, I exploded. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. She looks like she'll be fine. Um, if you're going through her stuff, you do find uh, a, an envelope with a combination written in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also find uh, in her drawer a bag with 52 silver pieces in it. Oh, we so take that. Don't mind if I do. You also see uh, what looks to be like some sort of ledger. We take the ledger. Yeah, we'll definitely take the ledger as well. So that's 10 minutes to do the uh, healing. And while you're going through this stuff, what are you, Chester and um, Alonzo is is working on the safe. With oh, that. Before you open it, because things could happen when you open it, we might want to work on getting our health back up to full. Yeah. Because we made Do a we mistake last time. Ask her if this is trapped. Oh, yeah. yeah let's let's ask. A, what do you say? Is it trapped? Will opening it turn. No. I am in the process of healing your weakened flesh. And I have sworn not to harm you for this information. But should harm come to my friends because of a trap that you have obscured within this vault? I will leave you alive to witness as I murder that woman over there. You make an intimidation check. Chester, Dang, that's Chester, good. Chester kind of starts looking up into the air as he's listening to all the flowery language, just being like, oh, oh, if she hurts us, she's going to kill her lover. Oh, okay. Do you say it out loud? Is that your, is that your assist? 24. 24? That was a nat 20. Yes! Ooh. God. Oh. There's no traps. It's just combination lock. And then you need a a key from the teller to open up the, the normal lock. And then the, behind that, and she looks really like nervous and upset now. Um, kind of freaked out because you're a robotic cat person who's threatening to kill their lover. I am a naked cat. Yeah, I am kinda, a naked <laughs> sphinxy cat. <laughs> kind of freaked out. Uh, and she says, behind that, it's going to be a, a, a metal barred door. You're going to need my bank key. And she points to the ring of keys behind her desk, uh, sitting amongst a pile of pants. Um, ah, well, thank you, ma'am. He'll grab the Chester will and grab the And you're also going to need one of the teller's keys there, too. Where's that key at, if in you don't mind? The teller's keep it on them. Is it? Oh, her. her. He'll point to the lover. She's a teller, isn't she? Your key, ma'am. The lady blushes. Uh, could I have your key, ma'am? Thank you very much. As she points to uh, the opposite side of the room, another pile of pants. Oh, grab those keys, too. <laughs> the pants were lost in two different locations. Now you see, you've been so helpful. So I shall continue to help you. And they continue to bind up the wound. This is probably during. That. During, yeah. yes. Sure. They look very freaked out by you. Um, so you have, have the no keys. I have no inclination to go back on my word. You have the keys and the combination. Are you going to go move to open the vault door immediately? Can we heal me? If I can borrow your healer's kit after you're done, I can do a check. There was a second healer's kit. Where? That we found earlier, Yeah, we right? found one. Yeah. Oh, did we? Yes. Yeah, you could take it. Oh, I will. My medicine is plus one. What's yours? Oh, I have plus four. Mine is plus four. Can I attempt to assist? 
Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter. Okay. If I get a two, I make the check. If I get a one, I fail. Oh, well then please make so. the check so I don't die. How? Uh, How? It's 15. Yeah, plus four. Two plus... Two. Oh, there, I'm sorry. I was thinking. Yeah, I have to make a good roll. You're right. My bad. Can I assist? Uh, now, where my, are you my doing head this? is... Woo! <laughs> In here. In here? Okay. Well, uh, I was thinking we're eventually going to have to leave this room anyway. We're going to barricade the door. While you're in here? When, when we leave the room, so they can't get out. Like, okay. they can't leave and run for the sheriff or something. But you're you doing this while you're in here? Uh, we, we could get out. Yeah, why not? Okay. So after you finish healing her up, um, and you guys are doing this at the same time, right? Yeah. Heal it, okay. Uh, she's like, now, watch out. There's two more of those clockwork guys, the gold tank brokers in the vault. Oh. Is there a way to deactivate them? No. No. It only recognizes a staff. Well, you're... Then how about... That, and also, uh, with that siren going off, who knows when the law's gonna get here. That's fair. We gotta get moving! Would you be so kind as to help us, then? I perfectly understand if that is beyond your realm of comfort, and I have made my word now. Oh, now, let's not do anything that would require them to have their guns back. No, 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 no. Not them killing, just going in and filling up the bag. I don't like it. I am They're sure. only programmed to recognize me. They'll still fight you. Uh. What about a uh, teller? Well, yeah, other bank staff too, but not everyone gets into the vault. What do you think? I think we should do it. I know it's tough right. to get into a fight, but as as nice as you've been and as helpful as you have been, I don't entirely trust you. I believe that's understandable. He grabs the wounded bit. <laughs> yeah. I it's like ultimately wound. We're just outlaws trying to get against Mugland. I'm not interested in hurting innocent people if I don't yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. um, I rolled for the medicine check. I got mm -hmm. 11 on the die for a total of 15. Yep. Do you make it? Yeah. Samesies. All right. So oh. you're going to get, what is that? 2d8? Yeah. Well, th uh, this still hasn't been an hour since the first medicine check, though. Oh, never on, mind then. On Alonzo. Dang. Well, then I'll do it on me. Okay. Uh, so... I get, I, I got more than I needed. Back to full. <laughs> back to full. Well, then we'll just keep Alonzo at the back. Let's get moving. What about um, your character? Psyker. Yeah. Psyker can be healed with elixirs, but not. I'm out of elixirs. Okay. No more. Can you be do healed with a healer's kit? Magic, Psyker? I think, is what uh, does not affect. Me, then you should but heal. I think the healer's Other kit items. Be fine. Yes. You should heal um, Psyker instead of yourself. Then. Then I will. Psyker is very hurt. I can do both. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll just take 10 more minutes. Yeah, I will roll for Psych here. However, if we get caught by the law, we're going to need every hit point we have. Yeah. Um. Do you want to start, like, picking them off? Yeah, I was going to start on the lock while y'all were doing this. Yeah. yeah Since so I can't get healed. While I'm healing you, you should focus to get mm -hmm. your a focus point back. Because 10 minutes is 10 minutes either yes, way. Yes, I will yeah. pray. Uh, well, now, when you get a focus point back, I'm trying to look at this. Does that bump you down to minor curse? instead of uh, moderate. That would make sense. So the way it looks like to me is whenever you refocus, which is what you're going to do, yeah. you can drop back down uh, a peg okay. to minor, but you can't get rid of minor until you rest. So, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Yeah. So that your oracle so even thing if you, is very risk reward. Even if you refocus and get all the way back, to all your focus points yeah. back. I can't get rid of the minor one. Right. And we'll, we can do some more research on this in the and even, by I time think, we play next. Yeah, I'm going to double check this, but I think if you, if you get back to all your focus points and you still have the minor and you cast one, you'll go up to moderate again. Yeah. Um, even though you've only spent one. it's That makes enough sense. Yeah. Wonky. I, I do have a question. Go ahead. I'm going to go open this safe. She said there was a... Are you going to wait or are you going to do this uh, while... Let's, let's heal up first. Well, I can be devising my plan. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, very hurt. I got How a about seven. you go and lock the doors? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I... Well, the thing is, once we open this up, there's a bar... This is what I'm trying to talk about. There's a barred door. Is that a barred door that we could like, have shot, we could out shoot him? through? Uh, if you open it up, it's a barred door. They'll be able to see you through it, and they'll start making noise and stuff. The question is, could we start range damage dealing like fish in a barrel... And they could only, like, throw javelins at us or something. Uh, it's up to you. Um, that might be a good idea. You get the sense that she was being truthful, but things could not be entirely as they seem whenever you open up that vault door. Yeah. I'm just a little afraid of opening up the vault door when I'm one good hit from going down. We could also... I know we're on a time limit, 
probably, but we could just wait. It's already been like 30 minutes, so we could just wait 30 more and try to heal you some more. Uh, Let's just go. Or if you have a heal spell. I do not have anything left. Or even with your focus points. now that I've got... Because every 10 minutes you can heal uh, because you can get your focus point back. Uh, I got a 17 on my die for treat wounds. Okay, so they're going to get 2d8 back. Go ahead and roll that. That is a 2 and a 2. Yeah, and I did double check. Four hit points. You're totally fine. It's just the magical stuff that you can't heal from uh, from other people. So since I'm back to minor, does that mean that I take a status penalty? Yeah, it's uh, minor is different than moderate. Okay. You keep minor even when you have moderate too. Yeah. To note. So does that mean that I take only three? Yes. Okay. Better than nothing. <laughs> so three hit points back. That leaves you at what nine? I am at nine. Yes. Okay. You have a focus point. Um, Every ten minutes you can heal with your focus point. Yes, and I'll get it back and then do it let again. Let me see. I think that I can just do life link, which would be a D four. For Alonzo. Ah. Okay. I mean, a, a little bit more points, and I could take one more than one hit, probably. Well, you I might want to. If you're going, uh, if you're worried about getting into combat, that might be the better time to do it, because yeah. then you can shave damage off of him. Mm hmm. Sure. Let's do this. All right. So, you guys ready? Yep. Okay. Uh, we I... leave the room. We barricade it with the benches and some chairs from the teller station so they okay. can't get out. Preparation, just in case I can shoot through said. Um, door. I want to ready my um, my hand crossbow. Okay, yeah. a lot of strategizing has got to go on here. Uh, so you barricade the door. You ready your crossbow. You got the the combination ready. You got your keys ready to go. Let's imagine this kind of cinematic style: dialing in the combination, turning the keys, opening the door. I am going to study one of the robot corpses before he gets done, so uh-huh. I can pursue a lead on the robots. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! <laughs> uh, Strategize. You open uh, the door, and you see behind the barred gates the bathed lights of the clockwork handlers in the vault as this massive door. <laughs> comes open and they <laughs> are bathing their lights over this massive chest oh. with like ornate designs oh. and a combination lock on it right in the center of the bank vault and they look at you as you'd expect and that's where we're going to pick up next oh. time he looks at me and i look at him and he looks at me and i look at him oh. and he goes That is a two action thing to do, okay? (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. If you want to see more from us, check out our website, thirdgallon.com, or follow us on Twitter. We are at thirdgallon, that's T-H-I-R-D, gallon. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag thirdgallon, and we are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook with the same handle, at thirdgallon. We also publish a video version of the podcast on YouTube, which you can find on our channel, The Third Gallon. Our theme for this season is Delta Rust, composed by Andy Ellison. Our ambience for this episode was composed by Michael Gelfie, and you can find more of his work on his YouTube channel, Michael Gelfie Studios. And you can support his awesome work at patreon.com slash Michael Gelfie. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.